Real Truth Daily. This is Daily Truths with Dave Alvin. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Daily Truths. The disciples were a hindrance to children being brought to Jesus. Can you believe that? But they were. This is what Matthew chapter 19, verse 13, and we talked about the first part of verse 13 yesterday. Then children were brought to him, brought to Jesus, that he might lay his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked the people. Can you imagine? So Jesus is saying, hey, let the little children come to me. I want to pray over them. I want to bless them. I want to touch them. I want to encourage them. I want to minister to them. And the disciples were saying, no, parents, don't bug Jesus. Leave him alone. He's got other things to do. Uh, Don't you realize how busy he is? He's the son of God. He's got to talk to the father. He doesn't have time for your kids right now. This is the kind of thing that the disciples were doing. They were rebuking the parents saying, leave Jesus alone. They were a hindrance to children coming to Jesus. A hindrance to children coming to Jesus. Do you know what the biggest hindrance to children coming to Jesus is in our culture and society, believe it or not? Parents. Here's three um, hindrances of parents to the cultivation and spiritual nurturing of their children. Number one, I'm going to give my kids a choice what religion they want to embrace. Oh, my goodness. And when that's left to the kids, left to their own devices, they can go any spiritual direction they want. And that's not what we should do as Christian parents. I'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. The second hindrance is, oh, I'm a Christian and I believe in Jesus, but I'm going to leave the spiritual cultivation of my children up to the church. Hey, we have DCEs there. We have a youth program. They're going to learn about Jesus there. It's all good. I'll nurture them. I'll care for them. I'll feed them. Um, I'll tell them right and wrong, but I'm going to leave the spiritual education of my children up to the church. Whew, that's dangerous. And I'll talk here in a minute about why. And thirdly, we as parents oftentimes don't have a counter offensive to the teachings of evolution that our kids are receiving in the public school. They're told that we evolved from apes, that uh, the world is millions of years old, that eventually all living creatures came into existence kind of by their own. And as a result of that, these kids are thinking, hey, this must be true. I mean, my biology teacher told me this. And so if we don't have a counteroffensive to that in the home, we're just leaving our kids to their own devices and really the temptations and leadings and evil works of the evil one. So to offset all of that, all these things, you know, I'm going to give my kids a choice. You know, I'm going to let the church do the nurturing and spiritual discipline of my children. And really, I'm going to let the public school inculcate them with false teachings. And I'm really not going to do much about it. <laughs> okay. So what does the scriptures say about all this? First of all, children are a gift of God. And the spiritual nurturing and admonition is up to parents. The book of Proverbs says, bring up a child in the way that he should go so that when he is old, he will not depart from it. The Bible says, bring up your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. You see, it's like a relay race. The baton of the gospel has been passed on to us as parents, and now what do we do? We pass on the baton of the gospel to our kids, and you know that in a relay race, the most critical part of the race is the passing over of the baton. And so it's our responsibility to pass the baton of the teachings of the Word of God, and especially the gospel, on to our children. That's our responsibility. There was a book years ago called Already Gone, and in that book, it said that the main Uh, spiritual influence of children belongs to parents. You can have the greatest youth group in the world. You can have a dynamic preacher in your church. But if children aren't being taught the things of God and aren't seeing it modeled in their parents' behavior, if the parents are basically saying, hey, I'm going to let the spiritual nurturing of my children go to the church, and they don't see the difference that Jesus makes, and they don't have devotions, and they don't talk about the things of God like Deuteronomy says, to talk about the things of God when you get up, when you walk along the road, when you go to bed at night. If parents aren't doing that in the home, the chances of the children remaining faithful to Christ greatly decreases. As a matter of fact, that book said, hey, if you're not going to tell your children about the Lord Jesus and model the faith, chances are they're not going to remain committed to Christ. Wow. What an indictment on us as parents. 
And so, parents, it's our responsibility to pass on the legacy of faith on to the next generation. And thirdly, we talked about this a little bit before, but what is the counteroffensive to the teachings of evolution that our kids are getting in public schools? You see, we as parents need to tell them that we evolved not from apes, that our original parents aren't Clara and Sam in the local zoo. Our original parents are Adam and Eve, and we came from them. They're the original parents, and they rebelled against God and introduced this horrible thing called sin into the world, and that sin leads to death. And we can tell our children the reason people die is not because they get a sickness or a disease or get hurt in a wreck or whatever it is. The reason people die is because of sin. But God has an answer to that. Original sin came from our original parents, Adam and Eve, but we have an answer to it. And the answer is this. Jesus Christ came to live the life we could not live. He came to sacrifice himself on the cross for our sins. He rose again from the dead. And all those who repent of their sin and put their trust in Jesus have the promise of eternal life and the forgiveness of sins. This is the primary thing we as parents need to teach our children. So I got to share this note. Go ahead and look at this note. This is from uh, my granddaughter, Charlie, who wrote this note to her parents. I don't know if you can read it, but it basically says, thank you, mom and dad, for telling me about Jesus so that I don't go to hell. <laughs> I love it. Um, Nate and Faith are doing their job in nurturing and incul inculcating their children, their child with the word of God. And that responsibility belongs to all of us as parents and grandparents. So getting back to the original thought here, the disciples were a tremendous hindrance to parents bringing their children to Jesus. We as parents can be a tremendous hindrance to our children being brought to Jesus. Don't let that happen. I'm not going to regurgitate everything I've said today. Uh, you can go ahead and play it over. And if you want to take notes and write stuff down so that you can Impress it upon your mind. That's what I have to do when I study in preparation for these. Go ahead and do it. You can rewind it as much as possible. So have a great day in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is today's Daily Truth. Thank you for tuning in to Daily Truths with Dave Allman. Pastor Dave Allman is the pastor of Mount Hope Church in Boulder, Colorado. If you feel led, would you consider giving to this ministry? Your tax-deductible donation helps us continue sharing the gospel with as many people as possible. Simply click the link in the description below. So come back tomorrow for your next Daily Truth.